It's been over a year since we uploaded my eight superb war movies you probably haven't seen but should watch video. It proved popular and generated thousands of comments. To be fair, the majority of the feedback was about the terrible audio quality, so hopefully we fixed that. However, we did get some excellent movie recommendations from you guys. So with that in mind, I've decided to put together a list of 10 classic war movies. And by classic, I mean films that are at least 30 years old. The list is not intended to represent the all-time greatest war movies. It's more of a collection of my favourite old-school war films, many of which have gone under the radar. The list also includes a recommendation from the comments in my last video. The film suggested by subscribers more than any other movie was the 1985 Russian classic Come and See. And this is the film which kicks off the list, so let's dive right in. I read a review of this movie which claimed, Come and See is widely regarded as the finest war film ever made, though possibly not by fans of The Great Escape. And I think that description cleverly sums up this film. Essentially, this is an anti-war movie. It details the atrocities carried out by the Nazi forces in the villages of Belarus during World War II. This film is famed for its hyper-realism, so how realistic is it? Well, scenes were filmed using live ammunition and the uniforms worn by the soldiers are not costumes but genuine originals from the war itself. Most impressively, the film did not use professionally trained actors. A big thanks to all those who recommended it. This definitely is a must-see classic war movie. Like Come and See, Cross of Iron is another film set on the Eastern Front. However, this film is from a German perspective. It has a bleak anti-war tone and stars a host of distinguished actors, notably James Coburn, Maximilian Schell and James Mason. Cross of Iron is famous for its unconventional ending, a result of the movie's budget running out before its scripted ending could be filmed. Orson Welles described it as the best war film he had seen about the ordinary enlisted man since All Quiet on the Western Front. On release in 1977, the film went largely unnoticed by moviegoers. It was overshadowed by another war film, Star Wars. However, it performed well in Germany, earning the best box office takings of any movie since The Sound of Music. The next film on the list is the 1958 classic Ice Cold in Alex. Four British medical staff are separated from their unit while trying to evacuate from Tobruk. The group must navigate across the desert to reach the safety of the Egyptian city of Alexandria. While struggling in the vast desert, the group's leader, played by John Mills, dreams of the day he can enjoy an ice-cold beer in Alex. In the movie's famous end scene, it took Mills 14 attempts to deliver the perfect take, leaving him drunk by the end of the shoot. The film was the 12th most popular movie at the British box office in 1958 and that list included several other war-related movies, including Bridge on the River Kwai, Dunkirk, and Carve Her Name with Pride. Ice Cold and Alex is probably the perfect Sunday afternoon movie, so grab a beer and enjoy this classic war flick. It's similar in feel to The Longest Day or A Bridge Too Far. If you're under 30 years old, there's a good chance that you might have missed this classic, or worse, you've only watched the 2001 film Pearl Harbor. In cinematic terms, Tora 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 isn't extraordinary. However, the historical accuracy and attention to detail are first rate. This is a great film that gives both sides of the attack, which ultimately changed the course of the Second World War. Is this a war movie, a heist movie, or a little bit of both? I'm not 100% sure, but if you haven't seen it, you are in for a treat. An American soldier learns from a German POW about $16 million in gold bullion sitting in a bank vault just behind enemy lines. The soldier, Lieutenant Kelly, played by Clint Eastwood, leads an unlikely band of GIs to liberate the gold for themselves. Clint Eastwood is the big name in this movie, however, it's Donald Sutherland who steals the show with his brilliant performance as a hippie tank commander, Oddball. You shouldn't take this movie too seriously, it's an adventure film with some excellent performances. Back to more serious stuff with our next film, Das Boot. This is a German-made film about a U-boat crew. It's widely regarded as one of the best war films ever made. The picture was nominated for six Academy Awards in 1983, which was, at the time, the highest number of nominations ever received by a foreign language film. 
Das Boot portrays the terror and claustrophobia of submariners serving in the Kriegsmarine during the Battle of the Atlantic. The cast was deliberately kept indoors during the shoot to make them look as pale as a real U-boat crew. The movie was also shot in chronological order, so the actor's beard growth would appear entirely natural. The majority of the film's $15 million budget was spent on the construction of U-boat models and mock-ups of interiors. Visually, the movie looks really authentic and holds up well against modern CGI movies. In 2018, Sky TV remade Das Boot in collaboration with several European broadcasters. The updated miniseries was widely panned by critics and is generally hated by fans of the 1980s original version. Please do not confuse the awful nonsense from Sky with the classic from the 1980s. Based on a short story by Graham Greene, Went the Day Well is the most unusual choice on my list. It's included as the film is unique in many ways. It's the only film on the list made during the Second World War. Released in 1942, the story is set in a small English village. When an infantry detachment arrives, the villagers suspect something is not quite right with these soldiers. The townsfolk soon discover the Tommies are actually German paratroopers dropped on the village to secure a vital crossing point for the upcoming invasion of England. Went the Day Well is a classic Ealing studio style film, full of wonderful characters and humour. It's also one of the earliest alternate history movies I can remember. It can also be seen as a forerunner for one of my favourite war films of all time, Red Dawn. The docudrama Culloden, written and directed by Peter Watkins for the BBC, was first aired back in 1964. It's a highly detailed reconstruction of the Battle of Culloden, the last pitched battle to take place on British soil. The Duke of Cumberland, son of King George II, would lead the government forces against Charles Edward Stuart, the Young Pretender, in the final confrontation of the 1745 Jacobite Rebellion. Culloden's docudrama style was groundbreaking in 1964. For a low-budget film, it delivers incredible action scenes, and at times it feels like watching a newsreel from the Vietnam War rather than a battle between musket and broadsword. You can watch this low-budget masterpiece on YouTube, and the link is in the description. We go from the small-budget movie Culloden to the blockbuster that is Waterloo, which, at the time of filming in 1970, was the most expensive picture ever made, costing over $12 million. I've included this film on the list for one reason. The scale and cost of this movie ensured nothing like it will ever be attempted by a film studio ever again. 20,000 real Russian soldiers were used to recreate the armies of Napoleon, Wellington and Blucher complete with authentic period uniforms and ordnance. Most of the movie is taken up with the action on the field and incredible attention is paid to making the depiction of the battle historically accurate. It was all done live and the results are incredible, an actual Napoleonic battle recreated on a full scale. This film is a favourite of Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson and you can see the similarities between Jackson's battle scenes in Lord of the Rings and Waterloo. The final movie on my list is the 1981 classic Gallipoli. The film stars Mark Lee and a very young Mel Gibson. The story centres on two Australian athletes who have their running careers cut short when the First World War breaks out. They are sent to fight in the Gallipoli campaign, an attempt by the Allies to open up a second front in the European theatre and bring a swift resolution to the war, and as we all know, that didn't end well. The screenplay for Gallipoli was adapted from the book The Broken Years. It's a collection of diaries and letters from around 1,000 Australian soldiers who all fought at Gallipoli. The two main characters in the film are fictitious, but they allow the director to give the story a human touch, often lacking in many war films. A brilliant movie with one of the best endings in cinema. So that's my list. If I missed one of your favourites, let me know in the comments and I might even include it in the next video. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and hit the thumbs up.